Hello, welcome to Hosted Bar. Uh, today is the day that Dawn and I get to talk about our last guest, who is Nick Pease. Uh, Nick, uh, as a reminder, was is a bar owner here in Platteville, Wisconsin, who uh, broke his neck and was told he wasn't going to walk and was telling us about his uh, bicycle ride and a bunch of other stuff. Um, but before we jump into all the things that we learned from Nick, because he had a lot to say, uh, how are you doing, Don? And what are you drinking? Ooh. So today I'm drinking a caffeinated mango and black tea. It's been a, a long day over here of just busy work. And this sounded very refreshing to me today. So yeah. I made a big, huge thing of sun tea yesterday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Using actually a tea from your hometown, from uh, Mount Horb, Telson. Mm, love it. What are you drinking today? Well, I had a long day, so I took a different approach. I'm drinking uh, some Sauvignon Blanc um, Matua wine from New Zealand. Yum. I know. I think I want a glass of wine later today. So <laughs> I may also have one. Just saying. Uh, love it. So, Don, you know Nick uh and known him kind of pre his accident and post so that let me pepper him with a thousand questions uh yeah. so, so but i really want to hear kind of what your thoughts were um about kind of his story where he is and did you learn anything new through the you know million questions and discussions that he had yeah well as i was even just you know reflecting or thinking of my journey of knowing Nick, you know, where I even giggle. So he grew up with my husband, they moved in and lived with each other, a couple of guys. And that's kind of when I first started dating Ian. So that's when I got to know, oops, sorry, that's my alarm to go be mother today, not forget about my child. Um, anyways, you know, so I got to know Nick, party, party Nick, you know, young Nick before even settling down in the this is when I got to know my husband too. Well, my boyfriend that back then. And so I've seen him grow and his journey, but then too, it was so cool to see him buy the bar, redo the bar, build the community he was building. He was making change in Platteville and festivals and things. And then all of a sudden this happened and it was like, boom. Okay. I think it was a wake up call for a lot of his friends and even my husband of like, he was on a trampoline and now he's being med flighted and it, you know, and it, now he's in the hospital and now he may never walk again. And I think it was just that, holy cow, things can happen in a second. And, you know, that was Nick. And I'm not going to lie. A couple months later, a good friend of ours got in a dirt bike accident. Same thing. Broke his neck, told he's never going to be walked again, but he fought through it too. And he's walking he won't talk about it really. You would have no clue. So that's where I love seeing the two difference, even though it's like a horrible thing to go through. Right. It's right. So I think that's really interesting, right? It's a horrible thing. You, no one wants to have that happen, but the different mindsets and approaches to, okay, what happened now? What? And I think one thing that was really impressed about Nick is he's like, well, now it is, you know, I focus on me and focus on getting better, but also how can I help others? with it how can I be seen how can I be because like he was saying you don't hear about it a lot because probably a lot like your other friend they it was a horrible time of life they don't want to relive it yeah they don't want to deal with it it was they they don't want to think about what could have been and so those who are also going through it, when they're looking at it they don't they don't have that inspiration and they don't have that oh my gosh this is awful is it supposed to be this awful because sometimes that's mm. nice to know, right? You're like, no, no, it really is. It's okay. You can work through it. Um, and so I think that's one really kind of interesting, cool thing about Nick is that he is so open. So you can be inspired and also kind of commiserate. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where I think for him, when he was even saying like, I'm going to commiserate with you, but also too, you need to get up and get moving. You know, where some people too, it's like, well, I guess this is what they told me. So I'm going to sit back and this is what I got to deal with where there are some things in life where you too, like got to accept what happened or 
you know, the certain situation, but sometimes it's like, you can get yourself out of that situation. If you just have some determination and not give up, um, and keep pushing forward. He may never be doing five K's again, and maybe he never did, but that doesn't mean that you can't be more than, you know, you may not be, this is a, thing that I've been having discussions with my dad he's very frustrated that he can't do what he used to be able to do I'm like yeah because you're 77 no one at 77 can do what you did it's you're always going to have the decline so you can always think about what you don't have and always you'll always fall short or you think about what you do have and see that gain Mm -hmm. and I think that's one thing that he kind of uh talked about he's like just don't even tell me what I don't have, right? Like, don't even tell me that I can't have it, that I can't do it because then I might start believing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think it was too, just uh, another eye opener to him too, of just sometimes you almost have to take a couple steps back to let other people shine and to show up and to, for them to learn something new too. You know, I feel like sometimes it's kind of almost like delegating work. It's a challenge for some people because it's like, I want to be in charge. I want to handle all the things. And if I give it to them, it might not be the way I want it to be done. Or I just might as well do it instead of, you know, having them do it. And I felt like that was almost a learning situation for him, for other people to step in and run the business or run the things for him or fix his house. Yeah, I think you alluded to it a couple of times doing it but I would love to hear more about that asking for it but even accepting help yeah yeah I can see your wheels turning about it so yeah what have your turned wheels uh I you know I think that's just to the giver in me and um I've been doing a lot of deep work on that of you know people being a people pleaser and it's great strengths wonderful thing you know you're carrying empathy whatnot but then when you go too far you're sabotaging yourself where you're not receiving you're not taking like I even think of myself I don't take compliments well I don't like it when someone tries to do something for me because then I feel like I owe them or I need to you know reciprocate and I think that's a challenge for us and I don't know sometimes if that's midwest people too where we're just you know that type of people if you bring something for me I'm going to bring something back to you um, where I know even for Nick, that was hard. That was hard to keep receiving. Right, he'll you never be able to reciprocate one on one to everything. And frankly, I would think he'd hope he does or has to, right? He doesn't want to have anyone else have to go through what he went through. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where I think too, it just, you know, sometimes you just have to be in it and you have to accept. So, I think um, I, I, I resonate with the, I can't accept compliments because as soon as someone comments, I have to say like, oh, it was on sale or, oh, it's just from Target. Or I always have to discount it. So yeah. one thing I've tried to do is just say thank you. And it feels really weird sometimes to just be like, thank you. Um, yeah. But are there, you said you've been working on kind of that accepting felt. So with Nick, he just had to, right? He didn't have a choice. He had to just accept it or know that he won't have a home or a business. Um, But we have more of a choice, of, but maybe not as much choice as we think. So as you've seen, you've been working on it. What other, you know, kind of like my baby step of just remembering to say thank you. Um, Mm -hmm. Have you had other things that you've been trying to do to kind of, be better at the accepting the help or yeah. accepting the kindness? Um, you know, a friend suggested to me to read The Go-Giver. Mm. Love that book. And I think it's just so important to, to understand too that people also like to give just as much as we like to give. Yeah. And sometimes the point is they don't want something in return. And they're doing it because they want to, and they find gratification or 
you know, what they need is to give to you. And I feel like even too, through this journey of me and being an entrepreneur, you know, it's hard to receive when you feel like you can't always pay someone back or that advice that they give you. And um, gentle, common, nice things of just, yeah, thank you can go way longer way than you realize sometimes or the kind note that you could write or the little things that you can do because you never know when someone's going to need you. And I think that's where too, like with Nick, it's just another reminder of you never know when one moment I could get hit by a car tomorrow. Right. And I think that's where even me of like why relationships are important to me of like, if something were to happen to me, I hope all the people that I know will take care of my boys. And I know that deep down they're going to be taken care of. And I know enough resources, hopefully for that, you know, even if I'm here or not. Um, I think that was kind of one thing I've realized too, through this journey is maybe that's why I've liked building relationships. So I know they'd be taken care of one day. Yeah. So um, I just read or listened to, um, the book um, 10% Happier by Dan Ooh. Harris. Ooh. Um, so he uh, is a TV anchor and is, is pretty sarcastic and was really worried about um, losing his edge and things like that. And um, can meditation, can you be both like in meditation and not be like totally zenned out? Mm. Um, and one of the things in the book is kind of like the self-benefit of not being a jerk like you being nice yes it's and being kind and being generous benefits the other person but it also benefits you yeah and it benefits it's you in um kind of a a lot of different ways one is uh like you said it makes you feel good right and so to deny someone helping you sometimes denies them feeling good and feeling yeah. helpful um and then there's lots of stuff that it does neurochemically and all of these other things that actually help you physiologically and all of this stuff that it's not just being a saint Right. It's not just, it's not selfless mm -hmm. to be kind and generous and to help others. There is some self-interest there and that's okay. Yeah. And that kind of makes me think of too, of empathy, mm -hmm. you know, like having empathy for others, you know, but also too, of like almost having that empathy of sometimes too, when someone's having a moment and they maybe are being a jerk they have that empathy of you don't know what they're going through or you don't know the situation. And, and I think it's just a, another reminder too of everybody's going through something and to okay. give yourself grace and to be empathizing of yourself when we always empathize for other people too. Right. Can I bring it back to Nick's thing? If you saw him now, you would never guess that the, the what the past, you know, three years have been for him yeah so you might be like why is this dude so slow what is going on with him all that and you're like oh mm -hmm. right you don't know the sheer level of determination it took and grit to get there yeah and to run a business and to have boys and to have you know a significant other and a house and i think that's the part too, where sometimes we forget all the things we're all juggling in life, you know, of, you know, that's where too, it's just like, it, he's made such huge strides in the last three years. It's crazy. Just crazy. Right. Through, I, I kind of enjoy his uh, self-deprecating, um, like, admission to naivete. Like, I didn't even know I was being stupid. I didn't like, I didn't, don't tell, kind of don't tell me the odds. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it just makes it better. And I think, I think it's interesting in that some people need it that way. 
right? Don't tell me the odds. Don't tell me because then I can't do it. And others are like, I need to know the odds so I don't get crushed. Mm. But also, um, I'm, I'm a goal driven kind of person. So I'm like, tell me the odds that way I can show you wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Prove to you wrong. And then I'll outshine that goal. Okay. You think that's the case, but that, but then also you don't feel bad when you, you know, they say it's 10% and you're at 30%. You can realize the true game, even if you're not 100. Mm -hmm. But I kind of like his, like, just don't even tell me, I don't even want to know because but he still knew, right? They still told him some stuff and you know that if you can't feel your toes, that's not a good sign. And yeah. to have that determination, but I think um, to go back to your earlier point, the he had a lot of support. He had a lot of support from family. He had a yeah. lot of support from the, both his significant other, but his his uh extended family his mom his thing but his community mm-hmm. and it wasn't by accident Mm-mm. right he had put in a lot of time and effort in the generous way right the, again the self interestness and not being a jerk he was he wasn't a jerk for a long time mm-hmm. and not because he expected someday to need to call in favors yeah yeah and I think it just goes down back to the two of like how important relationships are mm-hmm. and building those deep relationships because you never know when you're going to need the help. Or um, I just think of, you know, just to like, cause he has a, there's a Facebook group for him, you know, and, and just, um, you know, they did a GoFundMe even too of, you know, just different things to help in different ways. Or can you come and help and do different things where it's just like, I think it helps give people to think bigger too. And like, mm-hmm. you don't know what the outlook's going to be, but like, let's just try all these different things. Well, and different people you know? can help in different ways. Yes. And that wasn't just monetary. It was, how can you make them smile today? Or can you send them a video or like, you know, his high school friends, they made these big head things or whatever, and they stuck them on the wall, you know, and I just think of, it's a good reminder to us too, of like, you know, be kind to other people, because you just don't know when you're going to need things or that boost of sunshine. Um, Yeah. And so then to think of the bigger community he's building now, where he is posting on different social medias and he's re- and he's letting people reach out to him and telling his story and you know the story he had about the like younger kid yeah and, out to him and kind of that again he's not doing it because he expects reciprocation yes it's just the kind thing to do yeah, well it, it's the kind thing to do and it's i think it gives him he, he kind of alludes to it gives him a purpose Right. It yeah. lets him like, why did the, cause I'm sure the, how could, you know, why did this happen to me? Like he, yeah, he knows why. Cause he did, you know, was on a trampoline and maybe not as coordinated as he thought, mm-hmm. but the bigger, like why, how all of that. And to be able to say, well, maybe I can make something out of this there is, you know, this is a pretty dark cloud. So how can I add my own silver gilding? There's not a lot of silver lining that came with it on its own. He had to add that gilding. Yeah. Well, and I feel like that's where too, something about us is we always kind of want to learn and take in all the lessons and try Mm -hmm. and guide somebody else quicker, faster. So they don't go through some of the things we've gone through right and that's where I think it even goes back to two of like sometimes you got to take in that advice or that giving because they're just trying to help you get down that road a little quicker than they did and I think that's one thing that I liked about Nick's stories the thing is it's really easy to get caught up in his determination or his bravery or like all of the you know 
be strong kind of stuff but he doesn't focus on that as much as the the kindness forward and backward and Mm. you know how do I pay this forward how do I acknowledge what I got how do I accept it and what I got from him is more of a story of kindness and opportunity than Mm. either woe or look at my determination look at my strength yeah and I don't think that's a story that you hear often when it comes to you know these kinds of stories yeah oh I like that perspective because that too where it's like he's not I mean he's inspiring other people but he's not using that to inspire people right he's he's inspiring them through kindness and community and um that in yeah it's an interesting story and he didn't get into a lot of the details but the more details that'll come out is like some stuff but when he was talking about it, he talks about the people who helped yeah. you know it's the mr rogers thing like whenever you see a, a horrible thing don't look at the people running away look at the people running towards to help yeah in a lot of his stories look at all the people who ran towards to help yeah. And then look at how he can now be one who can run towards to help. I know. Even after I was like, oh, Nick, I'm sorry. We couldn't help as much, you know, and it was during COVID time and, you know, Platteville, you know, we weren't right by each other, you know, but I think that's the part too. He where shoved it's... that off so fast. He did. Like, and But that's where he was like, that's your guilt. That's like, no, no, me. Yeah. Well, and I think that's sometimes too, where it's like, you can show up in different ways mm-hmm. where he knew we were called away if he ever needed something, you know what I mean? And I think too, showing up in different ways is what yeah. people need and a good reminder to us all that it's, you can't, you, you know, we're all humans, but also too, it's like, I don't know. You just don't expect everything in life to happen a way it does. Well, and I think there's a lot of his stories, a little bit about giving grace to yourself. Like he could have sat and wallowed in it, right? He could have sat and like, oh, this is like, this is bad. This is me. This and and really, I mean, he 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 jokes like, oh, I was stupid. All this, but he, but he could have sat in that more and gotten Mm -hmm. stuck in that, uh, kind of storyline that he was feeding himself. Mm Hmm. And he just was like, no, that doesn't serve. That do- that's not going to get me out of this. So it can't happen. And it kind of the same thing when this, you know, what you were telling yourself, like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't help. He's like, that doesn't help. That doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. Like give yourself, be kind to yourself as well. Yeah. Ooh. Right. There was a lot of that where he had to be kind to himself. Like today I can get the pan out to make tacos that's it but that's a success and seeing those small wins seeing those small success and being good with it and kind with it and know that that's as good as you can be today Mm -hmm. again I think that was a message that I'm not sure he was explicit about but that I heard a lot throughout was celebrate the small successes celebrate and be good with what you are and what you have because it could be it could be a whole lot worse yeah where it's kind of like he had adjust what success or what celebrations were for him yeah yeah which I think is hard right you know, everyone has these big expectations about themselves or their kids or their spouse this is what should happen this is what should be this is where I should be in life and to then with him again it was involuntary he didn't get to choose Mm -hmm. but he got to choose how to respond to it yeah which is huge so do we all need to have that giant shake up to choose to respond differently gosh I hope not I really hope not yeah. 
I think it's just, you know, it's a good reminder too of, yeah, the shoulds that I need to do. I should, you know, all those things where it's like, we need to reframe things sometimes. Like I, I choose to not give up or I choose to do this today because I know it's going to be good for me. Or I choose to give myself grace in this situation. And um, that's the part I think for life even too, of why do we have to go through these unfortunate things to have that little bit of a wake up call? Yeah. So you've been going through a lot, not wrong things, but a lot of change in life. We've had a couple of guests talk about change, some abrupt, some by choice, some not. Um, and we've been getting a lot of different stories of different things. And, uh, have you had any kind of moments that you've grasped onto and you're like, Ooh, I'm going to take that and I'm going to use it. Hmm. I feel like I've had a lot of change in my life, a lot of transitions and, you know, I even reflect of this week. Yesterday was my son's first baseball game this season and I'm coaching it. And it's the first time that I could actually do this. I mean, I probably could have in the past, but it would have been like in your head. You couldn't have. No. Mm -mm, I couldn't have, you know, and I'd be missing events or I'd be missing this. And for me, it's been such a change to go and be present and to be with these little children that are in kindergarten and first grade and to just see the impact that I make and the change that I'm even making on these little children, even though they're not mine, you know, and, you know, I even reflect of a little girl that's been kind of getting teary eyed and or telling me how she wants her mama to be there. And so I've been trying to teach her how to be there. And so I think these are things where it's like, sometimes we have to take a break Mm -hmm. to notice and be present in the littlest moments where it's not all about the business or money or what can be the next sales strategy or marketing or, you know, all those things where it's like these little moments are so precious. And I think that's where, having these different people on have made me realize to just give myself more grace, but be present in the moment. And the most simplest things can bring you joy. Yeah. So yeah. That's it. Um, How about you? I mean, like with all these different guests yeah, now um, that I've been on the show too. I think with Nick, like you said, the thing that I, I gained was kind of the, the kind of thing but also the how you're not to say unintentionalized because he intended to be build a community intended to you know do a lot of stuff beforehand but not but I don't think he intended to have the impact and the return that he did and so how all of those seemingly little acts can be can accumulate to be a very big thing and and it may never return the way it needs to but when it but it can right and so a little bit like you with those little moments celebrate them but also realize that it's the little things that can matter maybe it's just a thank you note yeah maybe it's just a smile maybe it's a hey great job stuff and don't I think so many people discount them oh it's not it doesn't matter oh I you know it's only a five minute thing what does it matter and so they don't because they think it won't matter or it's awkward or you know all of the different stories you tell yourself that why that small gesture isn't worth it and I think a lot of the stories are showing especially his how all those small gestures add up and have interest and now all of a sudden it matters a lot and I think yeah. that's something that um is kind of driven home yeah and I think that's where even I sit and reflect of all those things that I used to go to all the events and you know what I mean and that's where mm-hmm. I think sometimes too it's the long game of like building those relationships and you don't have to be at every event right have that lasting effect 
is what I've really realized and why I've even been doing like the coach pitch. Cause I'm like, that's going to be more lasting too. And I still have all these connections and business and all these things, but I didn't have to go to that event tonight. I could be with my family. And I think those are, you know, just be more intentional, I guess, when mm-hmm. you're doing things or when you show up at things. Be I think present. of all the unintentional things add up. Now think if you're actually intentional about it. Yes. You know, where I think sometimes some people go to things and they're thinking of their sales pitch or their elevator pitch or what they're going to say or how many business cards they can hand out. But are you being intentional? Did you really build a relationship? Or you, be, you know, a human. Be a human. Show up, show up as your best self, be, be present during that time. Cause I feel like that's the one thing that I've just learned with that, where it's the time is precious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. does it really matter to you too? Or does it matter to, I don't know, the company? The stuff or that you remember is often, it isn't the business card, right? It's the conversation. Yeah. It's the, it's the thank you note. Because you always do amazing little thank you notes, whether it's handwritten or email or whatever. And that, that adds up. It takes a small amount of time per email. I mean, I'm sure they, the bigger chunk takes a while, but then you look at the return on that investment. It's huge. Because you just said, thanks. Yeah, it goes back to that kindness and caring because it can go a long way. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm not sure if you'd ask Nick at the beginning of his present or our um talk with him that you know, is your theme today going to be kindness and uh small victories? But I think that's that's what I heard from him. Yeah. I mean, because think about how many names he was sharing and it was, right. you know, like he didn't want to forget somebody that was helping build, you know, the right. ramp. It's like being at the Oscars and you were like, oh my God, I'm forgetting people. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm glad he created that community and the footprint that he did because yeah. like a reminder to all of us, you never know. Um, Life is short. Speaking of community, I think our next guest uh, yes. is going to be talking a lot about kind of building and being a community. Yeah. Um, so can you tell us a little bit again about who we'll be talking to next episode? Sure. So I would say Matt McGowan, he's in Mount Orab. He took over the hometown pharmacy and in Mount Which Horeb, is just a single whole location, right? Like this is not a think, chain yeah. of uh, no, pharmacies. Well, I was like, I think before it was kind of connected to some like hometown ones, whatever. Um, but like, this is like, his, right? Like, even if he was is, a franchise, it's like, this is his. Yeah. And I would say down the road is Walgreens, you know, and he's done a lot of things to bring in local community people or people that are making a difference in the community, but also too, he's trying to to showcase like how like health it's not just a pharmacy you're not just there to go pick up your medicine for when you're sick like how you can make healthier changes and choices but he's ingrained in the community and has a family and it's kind of cool to see but also running a business you know so how a small business is can be a community member yeah that'll be uh interesting to see how how that approaches it I have a feeling it's going to build a little bit on choosing change, choosing kindness, choosing return, a, a, a theme that I re- unintentionally seem to be having this year. Um, yeah. But also in, um, as a business owner, how do you do that? So yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yay. Well, me too. Well, thank you for having me and thanks for having the fun guests on the show. No, thank, thank you for finding me. Yeah. All right. Thanks. See you next time. <laughs>